Hi, my name is Royce and I'm a first year MD PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my medical school personal statement. This is the same essay I used in my MCAS primary when I applied two years ago. Wow, time really flies. The medical school personal statement might seem like it's this be all end all thing for your application. So you might feel pressured to have to write the most flawless and interesting essay possible. But I'm here to tell you that the essay is actually pretty straightforward. My last video, link will pop up in this corner, will break down how to approach the personal statement in four easy steps. So I hope that by reading my personal statement as an example, you can get a better sense of what the essay is all about. And you can see for yourself that you don't need to be an amazing writer or have amazing prose to write a compelling personal statement. Just state your ideas clearly and candidly. Before I get started reading, I just wanna say that I'm about to share something that's very important and personal to me. So I just ask that you please be respectful and use this personal statement for educational purposes only. I believe that good personal statements come from you sitting down, taking the time to reflect on your life experiences, and articulating your story in your own words. Everyone's life story is interesting. It just takes patience to discover how. Okay, now let's get to the essay. <clears throat> in the 10th grade, I was rushed to the hospital for an appendectomy. My appendix had ruptured, and a second surgery was done to take out the remaining abscess of infection. However, the needle used accidentally punctured my bladder in the process, and I was put on a catheter to prevent blood clots from blocking my urinary tract. Once it was removed, I peed for the first time, releasing a stream of clots before, to my horror, the flow abruptly stopped. I knew exactly what had happened. As pressure built up, I found myself in a dilemma. Either I would endure the painful catheter insertion again, or my bladder would burst. I had never felt more helpless and alone in my life. But my surgeon came to visit me. Tears and mucus covered my face, and she, a stranger, sat down next to me and held my hand. I was thankfully able to pass the blood clot, leaving the hospital the next day. Although my brain tries to repress the traumatic memory, I will never forget how my doctor comforted me when I was most vulnerable. A few years passed. I had not considered my career upon graduating high school, but after my hospital stay, I knew I wanted to alleviate the pain of others somehow. Science interested me and seemed to have broad potential to achieve this end, especially through medicine. I joined the lab of Dr. Y to gain exposure to research. Under her guidance, I developed optical biosensors to detect molecules in blood and improve the diagnosis and treatment of diseases. I found research meaningful because I knew our devices may someday improve point of care diagnostics for patients, ultimately reducing their suffering. My perspective continued to evolve the more time I spent on research, but my biggest revelations came from outside of lab. One day while walking to campus, I noticed a homeless man at an intersection. I would typically pay him little attention. After all, what could I do as a college student? But that day was particularly cold, and as I waited for the walk signal, he looked at me in despair. His hand held out and quivering. I could only imagine exactly how he felt in this moment in his life, but I could recall my own moment of helplessness and how much I needed somebody, anybody, to be there for me. We walked to a local sandwich shop and I bought him a sub and a coffee. He, Rob, told me about his life, his divorce, his type 2 diabetes, his near blindness, his lack of two fingers as well as any family. At that moment I felt ashamed that he had been neglected as a human. Why did I deserve my education, my health, while Rob and other marginalized people struggled to survive? That day I learned about a new friend, and in many ways, myself, such as my privileges and biases. Research, though effective, is not a cure-all. It is unable to resolve many illnesses like the chronic ones Rob faced, or replace the humanistic necessity of listening to those in pain. I felt this very necessity with Rob, who needed someone to listen, as I did with my surgeon who did the listening. My curiosity in medicine led me to shadow Dr. A, a geriatrician. He often treated underserved individuals, understanding the social and economic context of their illnesses to empathize with them and provide the best care possible. As Dr. A and I grew closer, he conveyed to me the sacrifices inherent to running his own private practice, supporting his family, and giving his patients medical advice after hours but he told me he would give up more if it still meant seeing them smile and laugh. Whenever he joked to his patient that they would grow old together with a sincere smile on his face, 
I would see the anxiety in the patient's expression turn into gratitude. I've also had the privilege to experience this gratitude firsthand as a patient advocate. Because the patients I converse with often come from disadvantaged backgrounds, I try to listen with an open mind, sensitive to their challenges. Their stories have given me insights into the difficulty of managing a terminal illness with limited healthcare coverage and financial and social struggles. One chemotherapy patient I met was distant and concerned at first, his eyes on the TV while his mind seemingly elsewhere. Once we started talking about the NBA game playing and perhaps luckily our love for the same team, he opened up, confiding to me his uncertainty for his niece who recently had appendicitis. During our conversation, I drew from my own experience. I described my full recovery process after the surgery. Though my situation did not exactly match his niece's, he appeared more relaxed and engaged with the game afterward. Once he finished his treatment, he thanked me and shook my hand. I could not help him with many of his problems, but I appreciated that he could at least take his mind off them as we enjoyed the basketball game together. Reflecting on my experiences, I've come to realize that only by practicing medicine can I fulfill my passion for research and my drive to help those in need. Science and technology further medicine, but so do compassion and presence. From meeting Rob, to shadowing Dr. A, to connecting with cancer patients, I have developed a deeper understanding of not only the socioeconomic gradients of health, but also the importance of humanistic care. My commitment to medicine is motivated by the unique opportunity to help the underserved directly and completely and embody the role of a teacher, researcher, friend, and caretaker. So there you have it, my entire personal statement from when I applied. Again, this is a very personal topic for me and I appreciate you remaining respectful throughout it. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you later.